This video will provide an overview for running the week 4 application assignment. The week 4 application assignment requires you to use one of the three types of t-tests. This video will cover the independent samples t-test. And the purpose of the independent samples t-test is to compare group means for two groups. In other words, if we have two groups and we get the average score for each of these groups, we want to compare them to see if they are statistically significantly different. Let's look at an example. Here we have gender as the independent variable. And that variable has two levels, male and female, or two categories, male and female. And you'll see that we have five participants in this study for each group, five males, five females, and we have collected a self-esteem score for each of these individuals. The bottom row depicts the mean score. The male group had a mean score of 28.8. The female had a mean score of 31.0. Obviously, they're different. But the purpose of an inferential statistical test, such as the independent samples t-test, is to determine if these differences are statistically significant. It is important to understand the scales of measurement of your variables. And you may want to revisit this information. The independent variable is nominal, meaning it's categorical. And it has two levels and only two levels. For example, gender, that's categorical because the participants in the study can either be male or female. They can only be in one of those two categories. The dependent variable is a scale, score, or a quantitative numerical measurement. And in this case, we're measuring self-esteem. So we're using some instrument to get some measure of self-esteem, which will be recorded in some numerical score. And this is the underlying conceptual framework for running the independent samples t-test. So you want to take this conceptual framework and apply it to the chosen data set that you're going to use if you select to use the independent samples t-test for the week four application assignment. Next, we will move on to running the independent samples t-test using SPSS. Okay, let's go ahead and move into SPSS and let's examine the procedures for running an independent samples t-test using the gender and self-esteem example. Here I have a data file open and it's titled the survey3ed.sav and in this data set I'm going to run the independent samples t-test. To do that procedure you're going to start out with the analyze command, you're going to go down to compare means and when you click on compare means you'll see you have the options to select one of the three different types of t-tests. In this case, we're going to select the independent samples t-test. You would select the one sample t-test or the paired samples t-test if you choose to run that for your uh, application assignment. You click on independent samples t-test. Now this is really a very simple test. You will then take your independent variable, that's the variable with two levels or the categorical variable and it's going to go into the test excuse me into the um, grouping variable area and we said that that was going to be gender or in this case it's sex so I would click on sex and I would click in the grouping variable area now notice that you see two question marks within parentheses and you see define groups well you have to click on the define groups and then you'll see that you get something that says use specified values. You have to identify group one and group two. Now, to know what the groups are in your data file, remember in previous assignments, we took a look in the variable view. Excuse me. I'm going to go to the variable view and I am going to select my variable call sex you see I highlight the row 
excuse me. And I highlight the row and I come over here to the values column. Now in this values column, if you click in the bottom right area where you see the three little dots, you'll see how the data has been coded. You will see that one equals males and two equals females. You will have to put these numbers in the defined groups area. So when we go back to the defined groups, we're going to put in one and two. And that will allow SPSS to grab all the data files for one and two and kind of separate them so that they can do the appropriate analysis. Okay? So I'm going to go back to the defined groups and I'm going to put in one and two. Now notice if I put in anything different, the analysis is going to come out incorrect because I have defined the groups incorrectly. I have to define the groups according to how they are in the values column. So you will have to look into your values column to make sure you know how to define your groups. Once I define them, I click continue. Now I also have to put a test variable. This is my dependent variable or my numerical variable that I'm going to compare the genders on. And I'm going to scroll down in this example and we have the total self-esteem score. I'm going to click and put it up here in the test variable area. You could have easily just put the total self-esteem score in first and then went down into the grouping variable. Okay, now I'm going to click on options and you don't have to worry about this but you do know that you're going to get the confidence interval um, which is important information for you to have to report. So I'm just going to click continue and at that point I'm simply going to click OK and what I'm going to end up with is the SPSS output for the independent samples t-test. Notice you get a group statistics box which shows the n which is the sample size so we had 184 males in the study 254 females this column depicts the mean scores and the standard deviation in the standard error. Down in this column, the independent samples t-test, this is where we identify if the test was significant or not. One of the first things that you have to remember is that you have to assess the assumptions. And the assumptions are identified in the text. And one of the assumptions is that the uh, equal variances are assumed for the self-esteem or the dependent variable. Now, in this area here that I'm kind of running the cursor around, you will see that we have the Levine's test for equality of variances. Now remember we said that the sig value identifies if it's significant or not. This case is 0 0.06 and we said that if it's less than 0.05 it's significant. So in this case it's greater than 0.05 so it's not significant meaning that we do not have a significant deviation from equal variances. So what we have to do then is when we report the statistical notation we use this top row of information. That's important to remember. If this value was less than 0.05, that means we have a significant difference from equality of variances, meaning that the equal variances are not assumed. And when we report the statistical notation, we have to use the bottom line of information. So again, you have to assess the assumption and you do that by looking for the Levine's test of equality of variances. Do not confuse this, I repeat, do not confuse this with the t-test um, st statistical examination. This is for the assumption of equal variances. That is not comparing the genders in terms of self-esteem. So you will have a Levine's test area to assess the assumption. Again, this is greater than 0.05, so we are going to report this top line. If it's less than 0.05, we report the bottom line. Now, the T statistic is the, 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 the calculated T statistic. The degrees of freedom is an indication of the sample size. And the sample size or the degrees of freedom is usually n minus 1, so or n minus 2, excuse me, for um, an independent samples t-test. So we would know that we had a sample of 436 individuals 
and with n minus 2 it gives us 434 and this is an important number because it helps us to understand what the critical value should be behind the scenes there's some math going on that you don't have to be worried about but when you start reading statistical notation you'll understand what the DF means and it's going to give you some indication of the sample size as with any statistical analysis you will see that the sig two tail column is what assesses significance or not again if it's less than 0.05 it's statistically significant if it's greater it is not meaning that this is greater than 0.05 so there is no statistically significant difference between the genders in terms of self-esteem even though one group remember um, has a mean of 34.02 and another group has a mean of 33.17 which is obviously different but is it is not statistically significant and that's how you interpret this information this is just the mean difference between the two groups um, the standard error and then the 95 percent confidence interval we will then move on to the next portion of the video that will show you how to take this SPSS output and how to convert it into an APA results write-up.